Hey everyone, how's it going? Earlier this week, the developers at Motive Studio did a 40 minute live stream talking about the Dead Space remake, and today I'll be breaking down everything that was said and give my thoughts on it. So without further ado, let's get started. The first thing we saw was the state of the game so far, which they said repeatedly throughout the live stream, and I'm going to say right now is still very, very early in development. The remake is being built from the framework of the original game, and for the past year or so they've been going through and adding in the level of detail you would expect from a remake. But they're also not anywhere near close to done, so if I see anyone in the comments complaining about the graphics, you're an idiot. That being said, the graphics we saw look pretty damn good for something so early in the process. It's safe to say that the final product will look similar to what we saw with the reveal trailer, so there shouldn't be any surprises as far as the art style and things like that. We did get to see Isaac and his suit looks a bit different, but it still feels like Dead Space at heart. This isn't what 343 did the Master Chief in Halo 4. This is still Dead Space. The final judgment is how these graphics are going to look when the game releases, but so far everything looks promising. We also got to see some concept art throughout the stream, and these pictures look stunning. I don't know if they were made by Visceral Games during the development of the original game back in 2008, or if they were made by Motive in the past year, but they look fantastic. Moving on to the gameplay, there was a lot of time dedicated to the combat system in the livestream. They confirmed dismemberments would of course be returning, but they also confirmed that the impalement system from Dead Space 2 would be added into the remake. But by far the most interesting change to the combat system is a new mechanic they call peeling. They basically broke down each weapon into two categories, those that cut enemies and those that don't. Weapons like the plasma cutter and the line gun will more or less remain unchanged. But if you use a weapon like the pulse rifle, when you shoot an enemy, bits of flesh and bone will fly off the necromorphs as a way to indicate damage, further balance the weapon sandbox, and make the game even more grotesque. We got to see some of it on the live stream, and they hinted at the possibility of severed limbs dangling from necromorphs in the final game, and that you could use kinesis to rip them off and impale them as another way to kill enemies. The peeling system is by far the coolest thing shown off during the live stream, and is the thing I'm most excited for when the game comes out. It's another simple but exceptionally detailed layer to the combat system that could be the difference between low and high skill players. When it comes to remaking a game, especially a game as good as the original Dead Space, I'm always on the side of leaving things how they were in the original. But this is such a cool change that I'm more than happy to see it added into the remake. The caveat is of course I have no idea if this will be a good addition until the game comes out, so we'll just have to wait and see. Another improvement they've made is taking the zero gravity mechanics from the sequels and bringing them into the original. In the first Dead Space, the zero G sections just kind of locked you onto a surface you were on, and you could really only take advantage of the lack of gravity by jumping onto different surfaces at different levels, walking on walls, and things like that. However, in the second and third game, you were able to freely float around in space, which helped open up the combat and give you a feeling you really were in space. It also made the game far less disorienting since it could be hard to tell exactly where you were in relation to everything else in that original game. Just like with the new combat system, this is a change that I'm perfectly happy to see. The system from 2 and 3 is far better from the original, so I'm perfectly fine seeing it replaced. Moving on to the story, the most surprising announcement from the livestream and what might be the biggest change from the original game, Isaac will speak in this game. He'll be voiced by Gunnar Wright, Isaac's voice actor from Dead Space 2 and 3. Given how I've said I want the game to stay as true to the original as possible, you would likely assume that I would hate this change. And while I would perhaps do things differently, I don't actually hate this change. The developers gave themselves strict guidelines on when he'll speak and the rules are fine in and of themselves, and the reasoning does make a lot of sense. There are plenty of times in the original game where Isaac, if he could speak, would absolutely say something. I've always interpreted that as letting the player fill in Isaac's thoughts like so many other games have done, but since they added in a voice actor for the sequels, it at least makes sense to voice Isaac for the original, at least in retrospect. This is another one of those things where I'm not going to know how I feel for sure until I get my hands on a game, but I trust EA? Wow, that's a sentence I never thought I'd say. 
But the developers are doing more to the story than just adding Isaac for dialogue. They've confirmed that Isaac's search for Nicole will be a greater focus in the remake than the original. This is a common criticism of the original game, and I completely understand why. You're getting ready to get on the Ishimura, and it's pretty clear one of Isaac's main goals is finding Nicole. But once you get into the game itself, that falls to the wayside pretty quickly. Granted, the things you're doing in the game both help Hammond on his mission and also help you find Nicole, but a more direct connection would fit Isaac's character much better, and that seems to be what they're adding. The developers didn't directly say how this change is going to be implemented, but I imagine it will just be a couple of different encounters that take you down slightly different paths than the original, along with dialogue that might indicate Isaac is looking for Nicole while exploring the ship. They've already said they want to keep the game as close to the original as possible, which is also what I want, so hopefully it turns out that way. Again, I have no idea if this will be a good or a bad change until I get my hands on that game, so we'll just have to wait and see. The last thing the developers said they'll change with the storyline is that they want to try and connect the original game to the extended universe a bit more. There weren't any connections to other games or pieces of media in the original because, well, there wasn't anything to connect it to yet. This could mean literally anything from adding in slight nods to future games to adding in entirely new areas or encounters. Just like everything else, I have no idea until I get my hands on the game, but I guess this will mostly just be subtle additions that most people won't even notice. But something people will notice is the lack of microtransactions of any kind. We already knew this was going to be a thing from the interview the developers did with the reveal trailer, but they said it again during the live stream. I already gave my thoughts on this when I reacted to the reveal trailer, and I'm sure I don't need to remind you of them. And that was everything from the live stream. Overall, I'm really happy with everything they showed off here. The developers said they were doing this to talk with the community, so hopefully we get more of these as time goes on. I wouldn't expect another one anytime soon, since there's going to be a lot to do before the game is ready to be shown off proper, but I'm sure we'll get more of these as the game gets closer to launch. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.